Today is my birthday. I turn 31. I am a widow. Keith and I met out in uh, Lake Louise, Alberta. It was 1996, I think we met, on the banks of the Bow River. Keith loved to hike in the mountains. And one of my best memories is that we were driving along and it was nighttime and he just pulls right over off the side of the street and he says, this is where we're going to sleep tonight. And we're in the middle of nowhere and it was pretty, I was terrified. I thought someone was going to come. Our son was born in 1999, uh, Scott. I was pregnant with our second child. And during that time, Keith was experiencing um, I would say some difficulty swallowing and just some weird little things that I didn't think too much of it. And shortly after our daughter was born, he decided to check himself into the emergency room. And then the next day I was told, and we were both told, that he had terminal cancer and had three to six months to live. And this was uh, six weeks after our daughter was born. It was my son's birthday, so that's celebrating his birthday but we knew at that time that that he was sick when I was 32 weeks pregnant um, my son's father unexpectedly passed away from an accident um, it was very sudden and it changed my life forever it it made so that my son grew up never knowing his father. His father never seen him come to life. He only knew about him in, uh, in the womb. My husband Sandy was first diagnosed with melanoma. Sandy had two initial surgeries to remove the melanoma and had a year of preventative treatment. But his cancer came back in 2016 and five months later he died in March of 2017. He was 39 years old and four days shy of his 40th birthday. Our boys were nine and seven at the time and at 42 I became a widow. He actually died on my dad's birthday, and uh, yeah, an unbelievable day. Not, didn't know it was going to happen. We thought we had more time, but uh, the cancer had a different plan for him. When you're a little girl, you dream about the man you're going to marry and what life is going to look like, and you know, I didn't know what to do, and I sort of coin it as. Keith died, and then I died, and then the moment after I was reborn, and I didn't know who I was or what I wanted to do or who I wanted to be, and that, so that's what changed. I changed completely because of it. When our twins were born, Sandy and I became parents to a two-year-old and two infants, and we used to joke that being outnumbered by our kids was a terrible thing. <laughs> And now um, I'm outnumbered three to one, and I'm grieving. And before Sandy died, I did not know how exhausting grief was. And it is so, so very exhausting. And there are many times that I feel that my exhaustion affects my ability to parent my boys. Kids make it even more difficult. Um, my son quite frequently brings up his dad, so even on a great day when I'm forgetting that it's just him and I anymore. He wasn't born yet when his dad passed away, and so he still at the age of five is just starting to understand the concepts of family and parents. You know, sometimes I'll find myself in a grocery store or out on the playground and I have to use the words to my own child, no Hudson, your dad is dead. And it sounds so harsh and cold and I can just imagine what people are thinking as they listen to me, but that's my reality. Mm -hmm. 
grief has taught me that I am stronger than I thought. Uh, Sandy was my everything. He was my husband, yes, but he was also my partner and my best friend. <laughs> the kids and I have built a new, a new life without him. Um, we miss him every day. We love him. We always will. He will always be in our hearts and he will always be in our memories. But as, um, as time goes on, we are learning how to live without him by our side every day. Knowing what I know now, we don't ever accept that our, that our loved one has died. We learn to, to live with it. We learn to, to carry it in a, a healthy way. It's been 17 years and I still don't really accept that this has happened. Life is very good, but it's still a tragedy. And I have to figure out how to, how to sit in it and how to honor it. The Hummingbird Centre for Hope is um, an organization that's specific to supporting widowed parents. And the reason why it came about to be a, young, a younger widow, and I certainly don't minimize anybody's grief, but to have kids living at home makes your grief different than, than others. Not more difficult or anything, just, just different. To build community, to have um, widowed parents come together, support each other. We want to educate the parents how they can support their children to figure out how to rebuild their families. We want to teach how to model healthy grief, how well a parent grieves has a direct impact on how well their children will grieve. So we're there to provide that for the parents and hopefully filter it down to the kids. I think it is a valuable experience for children to be able to see other children that have suffered the same trauma or experience that they do and feel that they're not alone, as well as having it fun. You might think that a bunch of young widows spending time together, there's lots of tears and lots of tissues, and yes, but more often there's laughter and there's smiles. Sometimes there's complaining, sometimes there's anger, but whatever it is, it's real. We don't have to pretend that we're somebody else. We don't have to pretend that we're okay. We're in a safe environment and we can just be who we are and talk about things that we need to talk about with people who understand. We're the same, so I'm looking at her for confirmation. You realize that you're not alone. Uh, you realize that the everyday struggles with your kids are the same struggles that every other parent is um, experiencing. And uh, you always walk away with some kind of message. Is to have, have self-compassion for yourself. This is the toughest thing in the world you will ever do. Uh, grieving, becoming a solo parent, and parenting your grieving children are three absolutely impossible things that get all tossed in together. We have to do all of that at the same time. It's overwhelming, it's exhausting, it's beyond anything you ever could have imagined. But widowed people have an amazing resilience, an amazing um, stubbornness, uh, desire to, to support their families and make sure their kids are okay. Don't try and be the hero. Sometimes there's going to be rough days and to just accept those rough days and allow yourself to stay at home in your pajamas. Try not to think too far into the future because it can be overwhelming. Be kind to yourself and only do what you can in that moment. You can do this. You are doing this. You need to remember that when you have the moments where you're like, there's no way I can continue on. You need to remember that you've been 100% successful for every single day since your spouse died. And that there is people out there that want to help and support. And just reach out. You can do this. Dawn with the breaking, quick with the waking